your life is on the line and you know that you're on an oxygen tank and they're going to put you on your head, see what you do. Because the bottom line is that me, I'm one person. I can never miss. The guy's not being loyal to you. How could you be loyal to him? Yeah. And whether you bother or not. So, you know, but it's always been hard because it was my father. The word came down, this guy had to go. You know, we yeah. didn't do nothing about him until the last minute. And, the, and I liked him. I liked Bill. He was a nice guy, but... Welcome to the show. Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks. And today, we're going to be talking about Mob Rat John Rubio Jr. So a lot of people know about this situation, but because Joey Merlino is out in the spotlight now on this podcast, a lot of people are talking about this type of stuff. So if you guys don't know, this guy John Rubio Jr. testified against Joey Merlino and his whole investigation fell apart because John Rubio was committing crimes while working for the FBI and he was getting paid to do it. And so the situation is when Rubio, he ruined the whole investigation. He ends up going on John A. Light's show um, and talking about the crimes he was committing while working for the FBI. So, we're going to go over this interview. We went over some of it last time, and now we're going to go over some more. Before we get started, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Even if you don't like this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. So Rubio went to this podcast and... um started bragging about stuff and he ended up going to prison. Let's listen to a little bit of him brag. Talk about like uh, the daily, I don't know, routine of when you're cooperating, like what and what a wire looks like during that time period. I know it's developed over the years. Um, and what that, what your interaction then with, uh, you know, the feds is like, how that whole thing kind of works. Because I don't think, you know, I mean, we see like movies and people wear wires, what that looks like in the movies, but we don't know what it looks like in reality. Um, all right. Well, the wire question, you're going to have to wait till June 29th <laughs> okay. for me to answer that because I can't, I mean, it, it's like, what what I can tell you about the wires is is you would never know I had it on. You could pat me down. You could strip me naked. You weren't going to find it. Because it's a watch or glasses. It's something you wear. Obviously, people aren't that stupid. They got a recorder inside the glasses or a watch or your hat or a shirt. I mean, they can put a wire in damn near anything now. But let's listen to this. Disgracia. It was embedded in clothing. It wow. I maybe, thought you were going to say it was embedded up your ass. <laughs> no, so they ain't going to find it there. No, it's embedded. I got to joke a little. Make a little fun. Yeah, I, yeah, no. It's 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 truly remarkable. And we're going back now. What? I mean, I've been jail two years, home two years. We're going back <laughs> six seven years ago and who knows what they have now but i've used some intri intricate intricate devices um well put it like this when they want you they want you there's no stopping right. them. unlimited and, resources and they just don't stop and a daily a daily day uh you should know gene <laughs> you're skating on the line of uh prison and uh reformity <laughs> James, what's up, man? Uh, JT, how are you? Otis, what's going on? Handguns, how are you? Thank you all for joining me this morning. I really appreciate every single person that comes in here. I'm just trying to bring you guys some entertainment. Let's get back to this guy. So this guy said, 
He even said it on this show. I don't even know Skinny Joey. They like placed him trying to get him, put him in the mix to try to get some information. It's crazy. Let's get back. With them is wasn't wasn't too great between me and them. Um, you know, uh, uh, we didn't get along. I mean, I, I, that's the best I could put it. And we didn't get along. I was well. You actually worked for a long time, then. I didn't realize you were doing this for this long, and you still did two years of prison. And the guy that was involved with the drugs with Joey Molino and the thing, he only did five years. So actually. Well, he cut some deal himself. Was he a cooperator or no? No. Well, uh, uh, more back to Felix, um, you know, and, and, and to ingrain your question is, is um, I almost ruined the case. No, you did ruin the case. In a minute, I'm going to read this article that they wrote right after this um, episode was released. So you guys will see what happened right after this episode. And I, I regret it. I mean, listen, I'm not here to brag about it. Uh, you know, it's another it was another mistake in my life that, you know, I just couldn't get over it. But th that case was, I mean, over 150. It was supposed to be over 150 indictments. And if you if you if you did any research or I could tell you that most people didn't get a lot of time because of that. And that's because I fucked up. I mean, I kept, I almost, I almost felt like I could be a better criminal because I worked for them because I knew they weren't watching me. I knew that, I mean, I was committing more crimes when I was working for them than when, when I was on the street. And That's crazy. This dude admits to committing more crimes when he worked for the government than when he was working for these uh, alleged mob guys. It's insane. Muggsy, how are you, man? So let's get back to it. And they were paying me. They were paying me $15,000 a month, and I was making another $15,000 a month committing crimes. You were getting so, fifteen. So right there, that's $30,000 a month for him to be on the streets and then trap people. That's crazy. That's an insane number to get paid to do this type of shit. And you know, it's not going to stop. They're not going to stop trying to put informants around him. They're not going to stop trying to get information. They want Joey in prison. It doesn't matter. He has a podcast now. And, and it seems like he's legit. These people don't like people that were in that life. So obviously, they're going to go at him full force. And he beat trials. So... I mean, they call him the new John Gotti, right? What happened to John Gotti? Hopefully that's not the case with Joey Merlino. He seems like a good dude. He's uh, very entertaining. And uh, we're going to all have to see what happens. And his picks have been right. So I was wrong. <laughs> I thought he wasn't going to get any of his picks right. This, this dude got all of them right on the first two episodes. But we'll see on the third episode. And uh, I believe he lost a couple on the second one, but um, his co-hosts, all his picks were right on the money. That kid really knows his sports. Go check out the Skinny Joey Merlino podcast. Tommy, how are you? Tommy Sticks Social Club. We're just going over this disgracia. And I'm showing you guys what he was talking about on the podcast right before he got arrested. So he went on this podcast and he was arrested right after for a violation. Let's get back to it. Thousand a month. Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing that I, I, I'm glad that you brought that up is. I didn't bring it up. I mean, well, no, you asked me about it. So I'll tell you that, you know, on the stand and um, my friend that we've spoke to, I'm not going to I'm not going to mention his name that you know, continues to slander me and doesn't know his ass from his elbow. Um, he, he keeps saying how much you get paid. Well, now, people have to take this into consideration, and this will also help answer Felix's question, is when you get caught and you're a criminal like I was, I had a lot of money. 
my house bills alone were 8,000 a month. I had four cars and I was living in Scarsdale. Right. So now you can't just, the feds can't just move you into a shack at that point. You've got to continue to live the lifestyle. You have to look good. When they took so all that, my money, they, I didn't get no lifestyle. Right. They just so there are people on the streets right now who other people claim that they're gangsters. They're, they're legitimate tough guys walking around right now and they have wires and they're recording conversations and they're trying to save their self. People, I mean, for all the people who got caught being cooperators, how many people didn't get caught? You got to think of it that way. How many people were mafia informants and they never got caught doing it? Quite a few, I believe. And it would probably shock you to hear some of these names. But let's get back to it. It's still okay. well, they, yeah, so that 8,000 8, of that 15,000 that they were paying me a month were just to pay my house bills. Because you have to give them an in, you have to give them copies of all your bills. So, and the other 7,000 was for them to put me on the streets and continue to buy dinners, com continue to buy drinks. So... And it's taxable. So this guy goes on there and tells people, this piece of shit, getting 50. I, I didn't profit a penny off of that. I used it to pay my bills because I couldn't be a criminal anymore. And I had to do their dirty work, pay for dinners and everything. It's not what he makes it out to be, this guy. You're not getting. Well, I'm saying who this guy is. Is he a big earner, the guy? Does he have a lot of money? He's a jerk off. Oh. No, he has nothing. He's a homeless he guy. He looks homeless. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, he looks homeless. Yeah. Yeah, he looked and they're talking about Joey Merlino. Listen to them. Looks homeless. Um, you know, he's he's been doing this whatever racket he's been doing and uh for eight, ten years, and I think he's got six hundred people that follow him. I mean, uh, on, on Instagram and Twitter. I mean he's all right, we I get mean, off the air. I wanna know who you're talking about. I won't ask yeah, on the air because you're not saying I, his name. I have also uh, but, but you know, to answer you know, that's a I I mangled the case. I mean, I, I literally mangled the case. I'm All right, he's saying he mangled the case. We're going to pause it right there, and I'm going to show you guys something else real quick. So I have a um, an article that says right here, Mafia informant who boasted on podcasts about destroying evidence in prosecution of Philly mob boss Skinny Joey Merlino claimed to commit more crimes while working for the FBI than he did on the streets. He avoids extra prison time. John Rubio, 45, appeared in Manhattan court on Tuesday for charges violation of his probation by associating with other former mob members. Uh, the former informant admitted to destroying evidence, committing robberies while an informant during an appearance on the Johnny and Gene show. Rubio, who faces up to five years in prison, was spared jail time because of the coronavirus pandemic. Federal Judge Richard Sullivan ripped Rubio for making a, a monkey out of the, the FBI. The former informant served as a star witness in the racketeering case against Joey Merlino. Merlino's case was declared a mistrial after he took a sweetheart deal. The a mob informant who appeared on a podcast with other mafia members where he boasted about destroying evidence in the prosecution of Skinny Joey Merlino has avoided additional jail time. John Rubio, 45, was blasted during a sentencing hearing on Tuesday by Manhattan federal judge Richard Sullivan who accused the former mob associate of making a monkey out of the court in the FBI of New York. Uh, you can make a monkey out of the FBI. You can make a monkey out of the government. That's fine, but you're not going to make a monkey out of this court. You gave a black eye to this court, Sullivan said. The only reason Rubio would not be returning to court was because of the coronavirus according to the documents. Former informant uh, 
later admitted he mangled the case against Merlino and committed robberies while cooperating with the feds during a podcast hosted by two other former mob associates that were never going to be made men, by the way. Uh, I felt like I could be a better criminal because I worked for them because they knew they weren't, I knew they weren't watching me. I was committing more crimes when I was working for them than I did when I was on the streets. They were paying me 15000 a month and another 15000 on top of it. Rubio was charged with communication with convicted felons without permission after appearing on a podcast with former Gambino associate John A. Light and former banana idiot Gene Barillo. Sullivan, who ripped the FBI after it was revealed Rubio, who had discussed appearing on the Johnny and Gene show with his former handler. <laughs> you covered your ass a little bit. Went to the FBI, but the fact is it was premeditated. So this dude, he totally mangled the case. He was trying to get all these dudes put in prison. No, this is live, man. 100% live. What's up, Junior? Um, He mangled the case. <laughs> Insane. Let's get back to what they're talking about. In a... Uh... Uh, I I deserved I deserved more than two years. I mean, and that's why they put me in jail. I stood home for eight months after the case was over, and I was always told no judge in the world could ever put you in jail after what you've done here for six years. But Bean Town, Pepsi, what's up, man? Yeah, uh, you said Gene is off paper now, and he's back with that girl. I really thought he was uh, gonna go away for a long time. We'll see what happens with that. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, a little uh, tad bit of information you guys might not have known is you see that beard on Gene, right? He was released from segregation. He got into a fight in jail and he was released from segregation. That's why he has that fucking beard. And um, I honestly don't think he's going to last too long. But we'll see. Grab your popcorn, because I'm sure something's coming. Little did, little did I know that I'm lucky I even had an agreement, John. I mean, I, it should have been ripped. I mean, I completely... Your case was out of where? New York, right? Southern District. Southern, Southern and, District. And, I, and John, quick question yeah. for you. Uh, how does it work also? I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned your wife and how, I mean, does... What does that do for your family when you're cooperating? I mean, do they have to, she, she's aware of everything. Do they inform her? Do they, is she, I mean, how does that work? No, but I told her the day I got caught because, I mean, I'm a fortunate person that, you know, 20 years married and she knew from day one when I decided, made that decision. And You know, the, you I, ever watch The Honeymooners? She knew yeah. from day one she was getting the worst of it. Yeah, she knows. Yeah, she, she got the worst of this for sure. Hey, hey, John, you didn't get along with your prosecutors and your agents? I got along with mine really good. I had good prosecutors, prosecutors? and agents. Yeah, you didn't get along with them? Um, I, I'm i voted most hated hated witness <laughs> by the pros. And this is the truth. This really? is an office thing. Oh, they love Let's listen to uh, Gene gloat about how his prosecutors loved him. Let's listen to this shit. They love me, they my prosecutors. To, they had to. <laughs> Along process. with them, um, I I'm voted most hated hated witness <laughs> by the pros. And this is the truth. This really? is an office thing. Oh, they love me, they my prosecutors. To, <laughs> they had to, they had to take. There was five prosecutors. They had to take them off the case and put somebody else on because it was war. I mean, I had all women. Not that I'm knocking women, but so did I. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, no, it, it didn't. It didn't go over very well, and yeah. um, so. Rico Rico Suave Gene, they're uh, bragging about. Oh, mine were all women too. So happened. I happened to get uh, when the trial. You know, when the trial started, or well, we're prepping. I got probably w the luckiest thing I could have ever got. I got a guy that was just aces, and he got 
he got me time served. I mean, he he took abuse at my sentencing. Abuse. Stacks, if you uh, had been the judge in Gene's last case, how many years would you have given him? Uh, that's a good question, man. I, I really don't know. Honestly, if I was the judge, probably uh, probably 10. He deserves a 10 clip, probably. He tied up women and fucking robbed them. He's a fucking disgrace. He's not like, he's not like a, uh, Andy's a fucking cooperator. Like, he's not loyal. He has no no morals. He, he brags about shit that he's done. Like, these people are not changed people. And I don't give a shit. If you're not a changed person, I'll go after you. I don't care. You, you come up here to claim to be something you're not. And it's just bullshit. And I'm going to expose you. And, and that's the truth. I'm not a gangster. Never claimed to be a gangster. But this is my new job. <laughs> Exposing these fuckers. It was nothing about my sentencing. He just... it. And Judge Sullivan, I thought, was a really fair judge and everything, but very strict. And it wasn't really about my sentencing that day. I mean, he used that opportunity to abuse the prosecutor. Right. Uh, he was... Mob Lamb, what's up, bro? Not retrying Joey. Dead set. He, he he said we, you know, they wasted the government's time, they wasted people's time, and it, it was it was a complete bashing. And and his only answer to him every time he got bashed was that Mr. Rubio won a book. You know, he just kept praising me, praising me, praising me. Who was you know, who was Joey's lawyer at that time? Jacobs yeah. and Mer Merlingo. Oh, Merlingo. Merlingo was also he hired, John, John Gotti. He hired, Mer, he hired Merlingo after the fact, but yeah, Jacobs, but, has been, Jacobs has been his lawyer from the beginning of time. Well, I, I know who Jacobs is, but obviously I'm familiar with Merlingo because he's a great attorney, actually. He's a top attorney. He, he defended uh, John Gotti Jr. I have some new information about that whole situation, too, with John Gotti Jr. and when he went to trial, and we're going to get to that down the road. But I'm interested to see what you guys think of this situation. What do you think is going to happen next? Do you think John Gotti Jr. is going to come out and have a podcast? Or do you think, uh, like, what do you think the next step is for him? I keep hearing about this Witsec Mafia, but nothing ever comes to fruition. Like, he keeps talking about he's going to expose this and that, but nothing ever come. Like, where's it at, man? Let's get back to the disgrazia. So uh, he, uh, I'm going to reach out to him and try to get him on this show, actually. But, yeah. uh, you know, he's my adversary, uh, but I got a lot of respect for him because he's the top attorney. He handled a lot of top cases in, in uh, this city, Philadelphia, and some other areas. So, uh, Take up some bulls. Jacobs yeah, Jacobs, I know. I don't, I don't, you know, I wasn't involved with him, so. Jacobs, Jacobs was, uh, Jacobs was tough. Um, you know, he was, he was tough. He had the right questions and, um, you know, and uh, listen, like I said, I mean, I mangled that case. I, I mean, it's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. I mean, I, I, I mangled, I mangled that case. I mean, guys, that was supposed to get serious time. Not that I, I don't want anybody to go to jail, but. Did you hear what he just said? I don't want anybody to go to jail. Keith, how you doing, man? Shout out to you, bro. Um, he said, I don't want anybody to go to jail. Then why are you cooperating? Why wouldn't you just do your time like a man? You, you Like, you can't just accept responsibility for the things that you have done. You have to put the blame on other people. That's the shit I don't like about these people. Fucking tattletales. We we were always taught since we were young, don't be a fucking tattletale, right? And now these guys, they're like, oh, if anyone's out there, uh, go cooperate. Like they're they're like, they want people to do this shit. It's crazy. Everyone uh, is cool with it until it happens to them, right? They had to let them go. I mean, not let him go. They took a felony, but no. I mean, I mangled it. I wow. I, I I committed Hobbs robbery. Oh, well, you luck. Oh, you're lucky, man. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I'm 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 the luckiest guy in the world. Oh, I man. say it now. I mean, um, I had a Hobbs robbery while I was cooperating, gambling. Uh, I, 
I mean, if I gave you my rap sheet, I mean. So I, you did pretty good with two years. No, well, I take you know, that back. Right. You know, honestly, yeah, he did because. Yeah, yeah, you did pretty good. Yeah. I know guys First, that got but, caught lying and got like extra six, seven years for that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, forget about it. I could, I, I, I shouldn't have. I literally shouldn't have had an agreement. It should have been. Fucking Gene lies every time he goes to court. Mr. I'm going to shovel roofs of snow uh, down in Florida. Like, come on. You're not too fucking bright, Gino. <laughs> Tonto. He's going, he's got a job shoveling roofs down in Florida. And then he has his friend write a, write a, a letter for, for the court, right? And then he throws his friend under the bus in court and says, I didn't tell him to write that letter. He's the one that wrote that letter. I had nothing to do with it. There he goes, telling on his friends again. Anyone that has any dealings with these people after they get out, they are not changed people. They will throw you under the bus in a heartbeat. We'll see what happens. Torn, and, and you have and, and you have kids now, right? Uh, how, had, how, old, how, old, how old are your kids? Eleven and five. All right, so you you need to uh, obviously do the right yeah. thing by your kids and uh, Paul yeah, C. And what's and up, man? Right, you're, you know, listen, nobody's That's perfect over. in life, yeah. and you know, people Not. that throw rocks, I guarantee you, if you throw a rock through their window, you'll see a lot too. But you know, you got to do the right thing with your kids now. You had the opportunity, yeah, I mean, I, and uh, that's where you start I, again. Yeah, you know, I, I believe me, uh, you know, I'm sure it's hard for people to believe, but I'm done. I, I'm done. I, I'm done. I'll, I, I'd rather, I, I'll live home. I'm not, I'm done with the crime. It's mm -hmm. over. I, I just, I won't speed. I don't want no problems with these people no more. I, I, I want them out of my life. They, listen, they did right by me in the end. They didn't rip my agreement up. I did the two. Listen, they they had no choice but to put me in jail. I mean, you better I was take that hat off. You might have a problem. He finds out you're wearing his hat. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna yeah, say, he don't like he don't like cooperators. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I I mangled it. I I mangled the case, and you know, I felt bad. You know, a lot of manpower, a lot of money went into it, and um, you know, listen, I, I mangled it. I did some bad things. I mean, I wasn't out there committing crime every day, but I did some stupid things, and. Uh, uh, I deleted, you know, I had a phone. So, so bad what I did. Listen to this. So this dude had a phone with some evidence in it. And he deleted it because he was mad at the FBI. He got mad at his handlers, so he deleted evidence. Fucking crazy. Dude, my, my wife, I had a phone and I'm home. I'm, I'm, I'm home where I relocated. And, you know, my agent calls me and said, listen, you know, mail us the phone. So I, I don't know. I was just bitter with them. I was always bitter with them. So I said, yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to mail them the phone, but I'm going to factory reset it before I send it. Oh, man. So I did. Well, so you're, mad at, you're mad at them because you're not really willing to admit yet that, yeah. you know, you're looking at them that they wrecked your life. You're not taking yeah. the blame yourself saying they, you wrecked your own yeah. life. And, yeah. you know, that's understandable. I ain't no psychologist, but it's easy. Hey, hey, Eli, how come you don't take your own advice? How come you're always blaming Gotti Jr. for your fucking uh, downfalls? Every time you blame Gotti Jr., you never, ever take responsibility for yourself. He even dresses like a snitch. Yeah, he does. <laughs> the hat, the glasses, probably has a wire in those glasses. You know, psychology. <laughs> and then so... This is a dumbass Tonto laughing into it. <laughs> Fucking douchebag. Here, let's take a little, let's take a little trip down memory lane real quick, huh? I did this to the door. I pushed the door in. In this Airbnb, right? Yes, I pushed the door. And his car is on file here. Yours. So I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix the door for you. So if I get charged for this, you're not being charged. I'm suing you. I'm taking I'm you to court. I'm fixing you. I'm fixing it. <laughs> I'm fixing you. That's Gino. So now, I, and now actually, not you, I can you analyze shrink. you pretty good. <laughs> you shrink now. <laughs> so actually, so now on top of all the other shit I did, I just destroyed evidence that oh they needed. God. 
We were lucky. I, <laughs> oh my god! I destroyed the evidence. So wow. I mean, I changed your I mind. They should have asked. <laughs> One of the agents should ask Stevie Cree, you know, can you add another fucking attempt to murder trying <laughs> yeah. to kill this guy? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, it just goes to show you, everybody else had pled out. They could have ripped my agreement. That just goes to show everybody how important Joey was to them. That I mean, that's how important he was to the FBI. Hey, he's the only gangster left in Philly. It's like one guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they. <laughs> Let's listen to Tonto talk about shit like he knows what he's fucking talking about. Fucking idiot. They wanted him uh, badly. I mean, they wanted him. They, this was it. This was it. This. It might have been their last chance. I mean, I don't know. Did they ever I mean, try to look, switch him over to New York? Did they ever try to make him like a captain in any five families? Did they ever try to switch him over to New York? Oh, did they ever make you? Did you ever become a made man, Gene? No, huh? God, why? Because you're an Indian? <laughs> no, they never tried to switch him to New York, you fucking idiot. No, no. But, you know, and then, you know, there's always little tricks that go on with this cooperating. So now they're trying to get me to get him to go to Patsy and him take me cuz I'm going to get I'm going to get made in a second with him. Oh, he's going to get made. This guy. This guy's going to get made in a second with him. The fuck. Listen, man. And if and if that's true that Joey was handing out buttons to people like this fucking guy, then uh, Joey's pretty smart because these guys are fucking idiots, and they would believe that that shit holds weight. And I think he may, if he if he really was gonna do that, he probably would do it for show. And um, you know, these guys are like they follow behind the guy with the whistle. You know what I'm saying? It's not the muffin man; it's the button man. <laughs> Do you know the button man, the button man, the button man? I'm giving him so much money. I mean, that's going to be a no-brainer. So he, he's very funny, and he says, Kujin, <laughs> why the fuck do you want to come with me, he says. You got the best of it, he says. You got me, you got Patsy, and you got Rooster. Who's bothering you, he says. Why you want to come with just me, he says. You have everybody, he said. Don't be silly. But, you know, he was right. You know, he was sharp. You know, the thing with me is that that'll never happen to him again. He's not going to fall for three years or someone because the money, he's greedy. The money, he's all about the Benjamin. Well, I don't think he's greedy. I just think that he doesn't have a lot of money. So he, <laughs> he, he's, he's always because he gambles a lot like crazy. He runs around. He likes to party around. You know he oh. likes to have fun. He, he's like one. Of, he's one of those guys. He's not a boring guy. I oh, mean, God, you know, no. so I know him since he was younger. You know, and, and I don't have a great relationship, but you know. So now John A. Light knows him since he was younger, right? <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. You cannot make this up. Now John A. Light has a relationship and knew him since he was younger. How come it never came out before? It's crazy. We knew each other. But, uh, you know, I stayed with Turchie and, you know, the, some of these yeah. guys that. So they, he, he has, has a reputation of having a lot of fun. I mean, you know, so when you're having a lot of fun and you're gambling, those two things means your pockets are empty a lot. So that gave you the, his vulnerability to get in with him, I guess. Yeah, he, he, um, he, he likes to, he's fun. Yeah. He's fun. I mean, listen, if you ask me. Oh, he's a far, a far cry from Patsy. You got Patsy inside oh, that's miserable. Oh, he wants to throw dots at himself. And you got I Joey mean, that wants to be in strip clubs. I mean, so, if somebody, yeah. if someone were to ask me no, who but, my favorite wise guy was in my career there, it's him. Yeah. So uh, let me get this straight. If this guy's your favorite wise guy, why would you cooperate against him? You didn't even know him in the, in the beginning. Why? Why would you? Do it for money? Is that is that what it is? I noticed there's a lot of people doing some some pretty wild shit for money. Let's take a look. Huh. 
Oh, look at that. Anthony Ruggiano is doing some strange shit for money. Crazy, right? Crazy. But hey, everyone needs to make a dollar. Yeah. All old far. timers are like that, though. They're all oh, miserable, God. old, bitter. You can't joke around near them. They got the mean Forget mother face it. on all day. They sit there like that. You know, that's, that's how like it, Yeah, that. that's what he did. That's yeah. basically what he did all day. Felix, I mean, like this, took the murder one face all day. Look. Yeah. That's how they you all. <laughs> maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night after five or six bottles of wine, he might start loosening up. But, you know, like a guy like Joey. You know, you could break his balls. I mean, you know, you could literally have a little fun with him, you know, without him being that wise guy. Well, you know, I you said know. this I said this plenty of times on other shows and interviews. You know, Joe, I think Joey, the reason why he got well-liked, he's he's close with all his friends, some of his childhood friends. Oh, he was yeah. a regular guy to hang out with. They joke, they laugh, they play sports, they play. And he shouldn't have let people like you guys around him. That was, That's a bad idea. People like you. That's why I stay away from people like these guys, because they're fucking toxic. They're cancer. They are like a you know a dark cloud that will hang over you, and they co they like they testify cooperated against people that they liked. So, what do you think they would do to you? You think they would? Oh, I'm going to be loyal to this guy. Fuck out of here. This guy's got loyalty to no one. They can't even be loyal to their self. Softball, football, you know, different things. So, you know, they're regular crew of guys. It's not like, you know, you're considered like a mob guy with that mentality. They had a different mentality. So I think people, you know, took to him a lot. And uh, he had that personality yeah, I mean, to play around. I, I liked him. I mean, I knew I was going to like this guy. You got that right, Junior. Remember, John and Gene were the first guys to platform Hootie Russo. The Hootie Social Club tells us everything we need to know. Hey, man, sometimes you need to navigate life and um, to figure out who people are. You know what I'm saying? And it, 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 once I, like, you break that barrier, it's like, wow. It's totally different than what you thought it was. Totally different. A lot of people think that, oh, if you talk about the Gambino fan, they're going to come kill you or this and that. They ain't going to do nothing to you. Don't talk about people who are active. Just like uh, Nate Dudu boy got slapped in the face down in Philly for talking about people that were active. That's why he got slapped in the face. And he didn't do shit back. Because he deserved it. But anyway, let's get back to the Desgracia. Uh, in the first hour I sat with him, I mean, you know, the aunt, the, he's in every nightclub that you can imagine in Boca. <laughs> I mean, the entourage, I mean, it's just, they just, they just keep coming. They just keep, I, I swear that they're sending out mass texts because we used to go to the cigar <laughs> bar. He used to call me up and say, Kujin, let's go to the cigar bar. You know, have a, I want to have a couple of beers. So. Before you know it, I mean, there's like three of us in there, and then there's a hundred of us. <laughs> I mean, and he loves it. I mean, he loves it. He's a he's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, he's a character, and people people love him. Kujin, we got to get something going. Who do you got tonight? He wanted to know who I bet that night, cause so he would know if I won. Wait, I mean, so his he, urn he, was betting sports? That's was his, that was his urn? He. He hooked me up with a couple of bookmakers out there. And again, at that point, I don't know anything about Joey Molina other than that. I don't know his M.O. I, I don't know that he doesn't pay anybody. You see what I'm saying? He goes, I don't know anything about Joey Molina. Then why are they going to send you to go cooperate against them? Make this make sense to me. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. They're going to take a complete stranger, right? and try to get him close to Joey Molina. Like, that was going to work. I mean, what happens when you try to cooperate against people and they're, and they're not dealing with you? Like, what if Joey and all them just told them a bunch of bullshit? The real ones are... Ramundi. Shout out to Ramundi. 
Listen, Ramundi never cooperated, and Ramundi stands on, on the shit he says. So, I mean, you could say whatever you want about him, but he, he's a lot realer than these fucking guys. I don't know that he just... His biggest hate in life is bookmakers. He, he said it. He doesn't pay them. <laughs> he thinks that they're, wor they're the worst criminals in the world, he said. He doesn't pay them. Uh, I guess he wasn't, he wasn't a bookie? I don't understand that. That's no. crazy. Well, <laughs> what happened was, is, you know, he hooked me up with a, a couple of, of, of good bookmakers there. And I, I lasted about three days and, you know, they didn't like the work. They, they chased me, whatever the, the case may be. But I didn't know what his, you know, and I and I was happy to get the accounts because I was also gambling behind the FBI's back, too. I was still doing my sports business. So I didn't mind to give them because I needed the accounts. But, you know, he then I didn't have any accounts through him anymore, but he knew I was still gambling. So every day would be like, who do you got? 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 And you start to realize that he's not rooting. He's not rooting for me because he likes me. He wants to know what my figure is at the end of the week so <laughs> he can grab what he can grab from me. So, you know, and, you know, like I said, the Mac, the FBI ended up buying buying the firm, you know, tribute, you know. What's going on, Costanza? How are you? But he always, always wanted money. Yeah, they that all do. was the topic of discussion with him yeah. is I need this. I need that. I, and it was not a hundred dollars, Gene, John. Hmm. It was I need five dimes. I need five thousand. I can't, bro. I used to tell him, you're not talking about a couple. You're asking for five, ten, <laughs> ten thousand at a clip here. I used to tell him, are you crazy? Oh I, man. So let's hear Gene laughing about ten thousand when he can't even pay fucking fix a door. I, I did this to the door. I pushed the door in. In this Airbnb, right? Yes, I pushed the door. And his car is on file here. Yours. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix the door for you. So if I get charged for this? You're not being charged. I'm suing you. I'm taking I'm you to court. I'm fixing you. I'm fixing it. There you have it, Gene, in real life. Oh, he's like Vinny Asaro. I got... No, <laughs> no, no, no I mean, he never oh, has money. He's like Uncle Vin. Oh, the figures man. that the figures that he used to ask for were like, I mean, come on. I mean, no, he's geez. never gonna have money is because he gambles the way he does. So you know, I don't know any gambler that has money. I mean, I grew up, but my father was a big gambler. So yeah, you, you have those times. Greetings when you from hit. Austria. How are you, man? Thanks for joining me this morning. But overall, you're always digging in in a hole. So hey, John, yeah. I, I have a quick question for you as well. Um, just yeah. going back to to cooperating. I mean, was there ever a fear for you? Um, Are you wearing a wire? You're trying to, <laughs> you're really trying to find out it, why, I, how you I do this. I, they're all ratting on each other, but we're gonna end it right here, and we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. Got a couple things to let you guys know about. I got some shows dropping today. Um, today I got the show with. Carrie Van Diver. Shout out to Carrie Van Diver. Her father was Hogman of the Pagans MC. And she tells me some crazy stories. You guys don't want to miss that one. Carrie Van Diver. I believe that one's at nine o'clock tonight. So you don't want to miss that interview. It's a really good one. And Friday, we got. And tray of cookies, frozen cookies. And I was trying to get out from the walk in. He was like forcing his groin area against my back. What? So he tells me some crazy stories about when he was in prison. Let's let's watch another what happens next. Yeah, man. it was just like a like a, a slight like slide by, you know, nothing too crazy. But either way, he was still touching me. Um and yeah. then you know, we, we left it alone for um a couple weeks. And then um, it happened again in, in the walk-in cooler. He, he, he made me like slide past him with like a tray of, um, a tray of, what's it called? Uh, a tray of cookies, frozen cookies. And I was trying to get out from the walk-in. He was like forcing his groin area against my back. <laughs> it was, it was wild. Yeah, man, it was, it was some crazy shit. So after that, me and my bunkmate reported it. Because everyone knew at the camp what was going on like people talk people saw the way 
Um, he was looking at me and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, the prison system covered it up. Everybody saw the way they were looking at what? So that's an insane interview. You guys don't want to miss that one Friday. And we got part two of this one coming too. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to finish up that one. So if you guys like this type of content, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you could get my videos every time they drop. And go check out the call out. If you haven't, check them out. Go check out the call out. Go get your tickets for October 8th. It's going to be in Providence, Rhode Island at 5 o'clock at the Civic Center. And um, this is going to be an amazing event. There's going to be a lot of famous people in the building. and um, Providence, Rhode Island, just getting started. Shout out to Jared Tillinghast. He's uh, really, really setting the bar pretty high over there. But I appreciate everyone that takes the time to watch this show. If you like this type of stuff, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you don't like it, too fucking bad. Start your own podcast. I appreciate you. See you guys later. And remember, don't be a bitch.